OK, let's see if this works. This channel um, has been going since the 3rd of December 2022. So it's coming up to being about a year old. The fifth video I produced uh, back on the 17th of December 2022, uh, titled Authentic Commentary or Leading Narrative. That was a really important video, uh, but it got blocked and it got blocked because I used the footage from the actual race. Um, I've tried to repost that video numerous times and every time I do, within hours, it gets blocked again. So I'm going to try once again. Uh, the visuals that you're going to see are just going to be track of you, not the race itself. I'm going to show you where you can see the race itself if you've got F1 TV. So you can overlay, watch the footage back in conjunction with this commentary and you will see exactly what this video is actually revealing. So I'm going to play the original video in the background and what I'm going to do is that what you're going to see is on F1 TV. This is the moment in time uh, that the footage I'm showing on that video. It's one hour, 33 minutes, 16 seconds is where I'm going to start playing the footage from, from F1 TV's coverage of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So if you look at the replay of the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, go to one hour, 33 minutes, 16 seconds, play from there and listen to the audio that is going to be coming on this video. Now, what I'm going to do is go to uh, track of you because it's less likely to be blocked. Around outside the pit. Uh, that's gone forward um, a second. So let me just rewind to that. And we'll play Gardo, to uh, 16 had Lance seconds. Stroll as well into the pits. I'll give you those orders as they shake out. But uh, yeah, it was, it was just bad luck. I mean, you saw the Mercedes mechanics just hanging around. Okay, so 133.16. I'm going to take the volume off of this. You'll see me play through uh, my audio commentary. You're going to just have to watch where these cars are on track as that goes through. Uh, and then we'll do the same and you will hear the commentary that you actually heard at the point in time that you saw the race. OK, this is all on there. All right. So there's going to be a second difference. So I'm going to take the volume down on this one. I'm going to go to uh, this. Make sure all the volumes are where they should be. Let me just uh, make sure the volumes are up on here so that. The volume of that should be OK. And let's give it a go. Let's see if we can get this to work. Um, so quickly pit play on there. Two versions of the same lap. You decide which one's better. Here we go. So. Better play, play here would help. Crofty. So as we are nearing the completion of lap 55. We're going to have just three laps remaining when they cross the line. So if the track isn't cleared soon, so that those lap cars can be released on lap 56, it's looking very much like we're destined for a safety car finish. Brundle. So what we're seeing here is a replay of Latifi crashing at turn 14. And you can see the shards of carbon fibre shattering off the car and onto the track. That's going to need clearing up before racing can resume or else there's a huge risk of at least one of the drivers getting a puncture. And then we see the car catching fire, as the lack of airflow to cool the brakes causes them to overheat. The clear up isn't going to be the easiest one for the, the marshals to deal with down there on track. Crofty. So with such an incident happening so late on in the race, it was always going to be unlikely that racing could resume. The data tells us that whenever incidents such as this take place in races where cars have been lapped, an average of 5.47 laps elapses before racing can resume. There were only 5.15 laps remaining for Hamilton when the safety car was deployed. Brundle. I'm surprised that Red Bull are retiring Perez. With just three laps of the season to go, if Hamilton retires, they were in a position to get a 1-2, which would have won them the Constructors title which is where the prize money is. Very strange. Crofty, Martin, if they manage to get the track cleared in time, can't we just start racing so that at least the fans get the excitement of a racing finish? 
Brundle. Well, no. They have to carry out the mandatory procedures so that the correct race order is sorted out before we can start racing again. Crofty, why is that so important? Smooth. Brundle, well, if we cut to track of you, you'll see the cars coming around the track. And we see Norris here, now in seventh place, tucked up behind Hamilton. But Gasly in sixth is now almost an entire lap ahead at the back of the train due to the safety car being deployed. Before Latifi crashed, Norris was closer to Gasly than Verstappen was to Hamilton. Lap runners have to be released so that in this type of scenario they are not deprived of being able to challenge for anything higher than 7th barring incident and so that cars in the top 6 who haven't been lapped aren't blocked off from challenging for position due to having lapped cars in the way of them. It's a mandatory procedure because it prevents fixed outcomes. Crofty. So the safety car train is now passing the site of the Latifi crash and we can clearly see that the marshals are now departing the track. Brundle. So what this means, ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing history. As it was not possible to release those lap cars on lap 56, and with lap 57 being the earliest point of release, lap 58 has to be completed behind the safety car. This has been the greatest ever comeback in the history of the sport. He looked down and out with four races of the season to go. He had to be flawless which he has been. Max Verstappen, your time will come. But if he keeps his car on the track for the remaining lap and a bit, not only will you equal Michael Schumacher's record of five consecutive championships, you will become an eight-time world champion, a record that many of us thought would never be broken. So barring any dirty shenanigans, Lewis Hamilton is on his way to becoming the greatest competitor this, this sport has ever seen. Okay, so we'll now play through the scripted version. Ever come back in the history? Right, that was that. So we'll go through uh, the scripted version in a second. Um, I didn't mean to drag that bar across, which hasn't helped. Let me uh, let me try and uh, take it to. There it is, that's the restart again. Okay, so that's where uh, that's where the footage is going to start again, um, which is the, the same footage all over again. Okay, but this time you're going to hear Brundle and Crofty. So if I go on to F1 TV and take this back to 133.16. See, so he's got all the tech. He's a whiz on the computer. Uh, 133.16, where are we going to? Right, so what's that? 133.08.09, so that's rolling. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is near enough, isn't it? Let's give it a go. Now play through the scripted version. It does seem that the engineer's right there. Whatever they would have done, they would have lost track position. The safety car's going, that's not going full gas down the street. Copy, Lewis, understood. His tyres are cooling. He, he needs more pace, more heat into those tyres. This is awful for Lewis then, with those hard compact and heavily used tyres. So, uh, there's the shot then, that calls the safety It has to be a safety car there. And, uh, but will they, will they let the lap runners through. I don't think it's absolutely mandatory, but that's normally on a wet day that they don't. Um, and if so, how long will they wait for those lap cars to get out of the way? If they wait for them to catch the pack up, which they don't have to do, no. then um, I don't think we'll get a racing lap. If they let them through, we could get one racing lap. Three laps to go. Nicholas Latifi uh, is 
seemingly okay after that contact with the barriers around about 90 miles an hour uh, but he would have taken a whack and it's good to see uh, that he's okay Sergio Perez coming into the pits again I think they're retiring the car here Perez into the pits for the fourth time I didn't understand why but I think they are retiring the car and yes they're not going to be working on it and that is the end of Sergio Perez's Abu Dhabi Grand Prix Checo, we need to retire the car. We need to retire, retire the car. Box. And for the really? Yeah, box. And lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. It's not mandatory in the regulations, which leaves Verstappen with a lot of work to do there. So, Mercedes yes, it is will mandatory. be constructors champions at the end of this race, as it stands at the moment. Assuming that Hamilton and Bottas finish this race. The Drivers' Championship, though, is they very already much were when up for grabs. Perez retired. The lapped cars won't be allowed to overtake, which means that there are plenty of cars in between Hamilton and Verstappen for Verstappen no, it doesn't. to fight his way through. Uh, Norris, Alonso, uh, and also uh, Ocon and Leclerc and uh, Sebastian Vettel. None of which are for position, of course. No. They're obliged to get out of the way, but Lewis will be long down the road. That, that, I suppose, is the compromise that race control have made here by giving the best possible chance for racing to the finish rather than finishing behind the safety car. Uh, they've decided the lap cars will stay where they are. Look at what it's conditioning you with. Cancel that. Lap cars will not be allowed to overtake. Yeah, of course. Typical decision. It's classic. Oh, that's the price. <laughs> what? I'll try and look at this objectively. We should get one lap of racing here. If we did, if we allowed the lap cars to overtake, we'd have no laps of racing to the chequered flag. So, so what do Red Bull want? And Max Verstappen and, and Giampiero Lambiassi as race engineers. Do they want the chance, or do they want to finish behind the safety car with no overtaking? Because I think that is the decision that has come from race control. And, and, and personally. This is the decision that gives them the best chance if they want it. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the regulation, uh, as I said, it's, we, they may allow the lap cars through. It's not mandatory to point it out, but as you point out, Crofty, there'd be no racing laps if they let no. the lap cars through, because I think the safety car will come in at the end of this lap, and there will be one racing lap. They'll all get blue flags, I would imagine. Christian and Michael. Yes, go ahead, Christian. Yeah, why, why, why are we getting these lap cars out of the way? Just give me, well, because Christian, just give me a second. Okay, my main big one is to get this uh, incident clear. You only need one racing lap. Well, I, I assume Christian's talking about then, you know, get, getting the lap cars out of the way, not clearing uh, the uh, incident uh, away. Yeah, I mean, Oh dear me. Okay, so hit the thumbs up if you think the first one is the most authentic. Hit the thumbs down if you think the second one is authentic. And make sure you hit subscribe to see what's next. If this has opened your eyes, share it and watch the other ones on this channel. Let's cl close these tabs down. What's this? What's this? What's this? Is that right? God, none of this is right! I live for this shit! So that was the original, that was the end of the original. This is the uh, F1 TV, uh, which we'll see if they uh, they block that for using track of you. So what you heard, you heard those lies of Brundle and Crofty. They said, oh, it's not mandatory to release the lapped cars when it absolutely is. They asked you, how long will they wait? when you know that you have to do a minimum of one further lap of the safety car before you can resume racing. 
OK, these are things that the, the commentary team are proposing as possibilities to you. This is disinformation. OK, this is what Brundle and Crofty are purposely doing to condition you to believe that something was going to be possible. OK, and then we've got this fake voice of balance. Well, what do what do Red Bull want? You know, um, I suppose the race director is making the compromise here, you know, because because you, you're pretending that that's within his discretion to be allowed to do that when it's absolutely not. He has just got to apply the regulations as they are, because that's what you do when you deal with a safety incident. That's the way you resume racing. That's the only way of doing it, because if you don't, you fix outcomes. That's what he did. OK, so all of this fakeness from Brundle and Crofty and the song going in the background was, honey, what do you do for money? Well, Brundle and Crofty, what you do for money is you whore your mouth out for corruption. You are truly disgusting. You are lying to children, fucking up people's belief systems and minds. That is fucking criminal. Filthy, damaging bastards. Anyway, let's see whether this, how long it takes before this one gets blocked. Thanks for your time.